1051. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, this is one of the interviews that The Breakfast Club gets excited about. Absolutely. Haven't seen this guy up here as of yet. Absolutely. We tried a couple times. Bright and early. His eyes look a little red. Yeah, Definitely absolutely. a little red. That's the, that's the perp, though. No, 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 no. It's too early for that. Early Ladies for and that, gentlemen, man. Cameron. Killer yes. Cam. Thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. Big fan of the show, man. Thanks for coming. They didn't believe you were really thing. coming, Cameron. Definitely not. Charlamagne said he ran into you and you mentioned I saw, it. I seen him yesterday. He kind of put the extra pressure like, you'll be there tomorrow, right? So. I seen Cam twice in my life. First yeah. time I ever seen Cam, he was shooting hoops in, in, in a gym. And my, I'm so stupid. I was like, yo, Rico got out? <laughs> <laughs> I get that all the time. Like, yo, what's up, Rico? You know what I'm saying? I get that a lot. So, but I'm a big fan of the show, man. Thanks for having me. It isn't that I didn't want to come here. I'm just not a real early person. Absolutely. But um, thanks for having. Oh, you me. could have stayed up all night and came, and it'd have been like late night. I was thinking that. See, I live in Jersey. The traffic coming over here was crazy. It's just a bit, just a hole to do. I was gonna stay in the city last night, but uh, I just did. All right. Now you got yeah. the new mixtape out, Ghetto Heaven? Yeah, it's out right now. Uh, my man Remo put everything together on live mixtapes, you know what I'm saying? So uh, that's out right now. Make sure y'all go check it out. We were but, talking about it because we were like, Cam actually got some hot songs on here. You well, actually got yeah, some. Yeah, no. I was, I was, I was, I was worried. I was kind of like, <laughs> worried. Actually, I don't believe it. You know, people, was, people was worried for a minute, though. It was a couple records you dropped, and everybody was like, ah, I don't know what Cam's doing. No, nah, you know, it is what it is. I can't please everybody all the time, but um, I appreciate the love and the reception that I'm getting on this tape, so I appreciate that. Go outside is a tough tune. Thank you, man. I appreciate that, man. Definitely. Everybody talking about the Come and Talk to Me record mm -hmm. when you responded back mm -hmm. to Jay saying mm -hmm. he made you a millionaire yeah it seems like you two always always are gonna have some type of issue i don't know i mean my thing is you know my once i'm like if i'm off the radar just leave me alone like once you say my name my like antennas go up a little bit but uh i don't really consider it a diss he had made a comment and i made a comment back on the record so it wasn't like a back and forth thing i just answered kind of what he said but i think he has something against us a little bit you know what i mean mm -hmm. like you can't play our music in the 4040 clubs. Like, Y'all not allowed in there even. No, I don't want to go in there. I don't care about even being to this allowed day? in there. Yeah, to this yeah, day. You can't I'm play. Not, yo, yo. Can't play. Yeah, one time. What kind, what kind of hate is that? Like, I was like, in you know there and saying? Freaky Ziki was in there. And he, like, they, eight bouncers came. He called me later that night and, and kicked him out. Like He was there for a whole nother event. And then like eight bouncers came and surrounded him. Yeah, I was there. Out. Yeah, exactly. Like, what kind of hate is that? I, and I said to him, I said, why they let you in here? Word, and the well, next man, I'm disappointed in you too, man. We better than that, man. Have, have you let's and Jay back. ever been cool? Like, where does this stem from? <laughs> That's what I said. Let's go back to uh, Rockefeller days, because uh, you, you guys were signed to Rockefeller. Yeah. Dame, Dame and, and Jay signed you. You know, you yeah. had a rock chain. And, yeah. and where did it start going south? Or um, bad? Uh, basically, you know, when I got over there, I really just, you know, because they was already established, Dave did a favor for me. Uh, you know, I was in a bad deal at Sony, mm -hmm. and um, he did me a favor bringing me over there because I was my man since 10, 10, 11 years old. So when I got there, I went over there very polite because they already had their situation, you know, pretty much established. So, you know, I see Jay at the studio, and I'll be like, you know, let's do a song, let's do this, and he'll just look at me like, just like that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like, all right, you know what I mean? So um, then we just started heating up, you know what I'm saying? And he he just like put himself on a couple records, but I wasn't feeling what he did, so I took him off the song. Oh boy, they say you took him off, oh boy. Yeah, I, I wasn't feeling the verse, so. And I'm not dissing him, I, 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 like, I like Jay's music, he's dope or whatever, but I just wasn't feeling the verse, you know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna lie about it. And then where it really went south, like he went somewhere or something, and Dame like offered me the job to be like vice president. The vice president, I remember. He went, he went yeah. on on vacation, and yeah. Dame made you vice president of Rockefeller. But he didn't he, even he, consult with Jay Z about he it. He made me an offer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I felt yeah, Jay Z probably felt that they didn't consult with him, and like everything kind of went south from there. Mm -hmm. But and you I never took the job though, because Def Jam didn't want to pay you the, the half a million you wanted for salary, right? Uh, yeah, my lawyer advised me where uh, they was getting paid, but the president was getting paid that time. I think it was like seven hundred fifty thousand, and they didn't, they was offering a half a million. And I was like, that is that's you're trying to lowball me, no homo. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't take the job. And I also remember there was like a tour they went on, and there was some issues because you mic guys, tour. yeah, the rock the mic tour. Yeah, I wasn't invited. <laughs> like you know, I, these are questions I, I can't even answer. Right. I don't know why. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But I just know when we first got there, we tried to be cool and. You know, it's only but so long you could try and be cool when somebody giving you their ass to kiss. Part of my language, I don't know. Now also, they, you, you said when the dude shot at you back in the day in D.C., mm -hmm. he threw up the rock sign. Did you ever find out what that was? <laughs> was that a hit or just a random rock fan? I mean, I mean you know.
we got fans or whatever, but I don't, I, I don't really, I didn't really do too much investigation. I know basically I went to jail after I got shot because um, I didn't, basically, you know, the pull, man, when I got shot, actually, it was two cop cars behind me and one in front of me. I, got, I forget the street, but it was just, whoever that dude was, he's pretty brave because he's like basically did that, let's say, for instance, if it was New York, like 34th Street and 8th Avenue, you right. know what I'm saying, in front of a lot of people. But, um, you know, the cops, they wanted me to come cooperate. I'm like, y'all was right there. The car they they was in crashed, and they found the cell phone, and they want my help. I'm like, y'all have everything. So mm -hmm. by me not going down there, I was on probation at the time. They violated my probation. So I, like, actually got shot and then yeah, sent to jail. To <laughs> yeah. But weren't y'all going to form the group at one point, the commission? It was supposed to be mm -hmm. you, Jay, Big, mm -hmm. Charlie Baltimore? No, nah, I wasn't part of that. I wasn't okay. part of that at all. I met Basically, I met Biggie through Mace and Biggie was feeling me. I used to go to his crib and rap for him and then. He wanted to sign you, right? Yeah, after he passed away, his partner, Un Rivera, signed me. So that's how I got to deal with Un. And so you ended up signing with Big? Yeah, basically. That was kind of Big's label. I, I was just about to say that. Mm -hmm. Kind of signing with Un was kind of signing with Big because I was his business partner uh, <clears throat> while he was alive. Right. Yeah. Then what happened with um, Mace? You still speak mm -hmm. with Mace? I haven't spoken to Mace in about, about three, four years. I don't know, Mace just be up and down. You know what I'm saying? Like. I don't really like Mace. He'll he'll be like you know he'll do the church thing. Then you go on his Instagram and you be like yo where the bitches at? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And I'd be like yo he tougher than lover man. You know what I'm saying? So you know it just makes me real finicky. That's my man growing up. Y'all was spent, yeah that's, cool yeah. ball with each other and everything. Yeah, that's my man. He it just made him like a 180 on nigga. It seemed like he changed when he got in the industry. Like he became industry tutorialized because like. He was, he was supposed to be in a horse and carriage video, but then he was going to charge you. Like, how you charge yeah. a man to be in the video? Yeah, exactly. Good point. But, um, you know, I learned a lot. I was young in the game. not saying he still should have charged me. But, you know, looking back on it, on a lot of stuff and, uh, you know, just being around so long and being blessed to see a lot of things, it's like, you know, I, I still don't pump with him for certain things like Mr. Hub funeral and certain things like that. But... Just looking back on it and seeing my young boys that's around me now, like Mace was 21 years old, sold five million records, had about seven, eight million dollars at 21, 22 years, two years old. I'm looking at some of my young boys who are like 24, 25. I'm like, y'all would not know, y'all would go buck eight crazy if y'all had five hundred thousand right. dollars so you know if you 21 and 22 years old with that kind of money and your first album you ever put out sells three four million records your mentality is way different and it was just a lot to handle at that age now uh, there was a lot of rumors that you guys ran mace to atlanta that he was just so scared <laughs> not me not me per se basically basically I was running around with Mace, making sure he was good, and then he had got a deal with Jermaine Dupri for that. Harlem oh, World. Yeah, mm -hmm. All Out was the label in uh, Harlem World. And basically, I knew what the deal was like, maybe two or three million dollars, and he was giving everybody $10,000. <laughs> and I was like, dog, you know, I helped write Matt, your album, uh, other stuff that was given to us for the right, and I was like, I ain't got no beef, but I'm just out, I'm not a part of this. And I'm not saying I'm like the tough guy or nothing, but I was just making sure he was good in the street. And then when I started messing, it was just like pretty much like an open free fall. He was just getting in a fist fights in Harlem, and then people threatening him, then people was taking the chains. So it wasn't me, it was just a bunch of stuff that was going on in the streets with other people. And I just think he got tired of it and broke out. Now right. You got three million, you only give people 10,000, and you become a pastor and ask people for 10% of their earnings. But you ain't giving them 10% of your own. But let's keep it real. A lot of issues that people have business wise has to do with money, relationships, absolutely. friendships, everything. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Comes down to money. Like, even with you and Jim Jones, you guys mm -hmm. had your falling out. I always assumed that was over money. Yeah, no, nah, not really. I just say with Jim, my thing with Jim and, and everybody, all of us are in a good space right now, but I never really fed into when all that was going on because it was a time, Jim, we were sitting, you know, we always strategized and stuff. And, uh, there was a time he was in my kitchen. And he was like, "Yo, let's act like we got beef." And I'm like, "Why would we act like we have?" That, was, beef? that really happened. I heard that, but that really happened. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. like, "Yo, why would we act like we got beef?" You going to confuse the fans? He's like, "Nah, we could do this." And I'm like, "I ain't really with all that." So you know, as everybody's fame mm -hmm. grows, you know, you're not with each other every day. And then we we wasn't speaking for a while. Not that it was a problem. And he just was like, "Yeah." F Cam and this, that, and the third, and you got all time. I'm like, oh, he's really following through with this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, so he started doing it. He <laughs> said, like, it started off yeah. fake and then it turned real. Yeah, and I was, I just not fed into it because the whole time it was like, yo, you said you was going to do this, and I told you I wasn't with it, and you're still doing it. But 
And that's how that went. But at the end of the day, everybody's good now. Yeah, I remember you guys saw each other for the um, and spoke like in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. It Absolutely. was like some type of converse band of ballers game, and it was yeah, a we, huge deal. Yeah, we spoke before that. You know, we wasn't going to pop up on each other or nothing like that, but we spoke and strategized that out also. And what about with Jewels? Because I know at one time Jewels wasn't going to record with Def Jam under your label. Was that mm -hmm. all that was true? Yeah, just, you know, Jewel, same thing. He just basically was like, uh, you know, me and Jim started speaking, they started hanging out. So, you know, that start that talk started. So he's like, y'all want out my deal, yada, yada, yada. And I, I'm not wanting to hold nobody up. Def Jam called me, said they wanted them directly. We worked the financial part out, and that was that. Yeah, for a period of time, I thought Jewel's, it seemed like he was stuck and wasn't putting out music because he couldn't. Now he said, I, I believe he said at the time, he just didn't want to record, on, he wanted to be free before he recorded. My thing is, he been free, you know what I'm saying? Now, like, he's he been out the deal since 2008, 2009, so. So if y'all cool now, what's the hold up on the dip series? Um, um, just basically, you know, we was talk, we all talk, cause we do about, we do about 10 shows a year together, you know what I'm saying? And just basically the time and everybody's doing something and it wouldn't be genuine. We can all go in the studio for two, three days and give y'all an album, but it wouldn't be genuine. Like with the Diplomat movement, you watch some guys or some kids grow from not really having too much to be really successful. So a lot of our fans grew with us, you know what I'm saying? So if we can't sit down together for a month or so, not saying every day and get it right, it'd be fake and then nobody want to give y'all fake music. Do y'all even still like dealing with majors? Because we heard stories about you running up in the Sony building and beating up executives <laughs> and being banned from there. Like, at like this, in this day and age, you like dealing with major labels? Well, what happened is recently with me and uh, big shout out to my man uh, Tom Moskowitz and Joey I.E. and uh, Leo over there. You know, they left Warner Brothers, which I was signed to and when they, right before they left, I was like, yo, I don't know, you know, I'm not, I don't want to be lost in the source. So they just gave me my papers so I could get out my deal and do what I want to do. But um, I was actually signed to Asylum through them, but Todd left, Joey left, Lior left, so I'm like, I'm leaving, that was the foundation over there. But at this point, it doesn't really make sense. And if you, and not not particularly me, I'm just saying for new artists, like, yeah, I want a deal, I want a deal. All label, all these labels, they're chasing people who don't want deals. So if you out go to a label and be like, yo, I want a deal, they're not messing with you, because there's so many people popping there that don't have deals, that those are the people that they're chasing. Mm -hmm. I remember we had our anniversary party at the Best Buy Theater, and I was like, oh, we should see if Cameron can come through. That would be awesome. They said you were banned from there, too. Oh, yeah. Whole dip set. What did y'all do? Just go around beating people up all throughout the city? What? I'm no, like, what did the they best, do? The Best Buy Theater, you talking about like last year, right? Yeah. Or something like that. I remember Vado, Vado yeah. actually came. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you couldn't get in. They wouldn't let get him in. in. <laughs> um, we all, that, that particular incident um, last year, year before last, it was a bunch of us and like, I guess there's security in there, was like, yo, y'all gotta get under control and slam the door and my son was right there and he just, like, just missed my son's fingers. So, like, I didn't do nothing but a couple people I was with didn't like that. Mm. Okay. Well, so what's up with Vado? Vado's with mm -hmm. uh, DJ Khaled now. Yeah. How did that go down? Did you just let him out of this situation or what? Yeah, basically, uh, you know, Vado had called me one day and, was, and it was like something personal. I was like, yo, what are you talking about? And Basically, with me, like, same thing with uh, Joel, Jim, whoever. Once I could feel a way, it's like, yo, this is, like, not musical, and this is kind of too personal. I'm I'm curving. That's just me. And I'm just... Like, what could it be? You banged his girl or something? Like, you're <laughs> personal. Like, <I> just... <laughs> <laughs> nah, like, I, I'm just keeping it on the vinyl code. Text me one day and was like, yo, I heard you was talking about me in the street. I'm like, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> Which street are you talking about or whatever? <laughs> And so he's texting me. I'm like, yo, I don't wanna, I'm not doing the text back and forth thing. Like, if you want to meet me right now, I'll come meet you. Or you want to call me, we could talk. Nah, I'll flee. And he's like, you never believed in me. I'm like, never believed in you. It was like it was an emotional text. Wow. And I was like, I, don't, I spend wild money trying to get you hot out of my personal account. So after that, I just never picked the phone back up after that. You so know what I'm Cal saying? Cal had called you? To yeah, then Cal gave me a call. He's like, yo, I want to work with Vital about, about seven or eight months after that. And then I was like, yo, go ahead. I'm not here to hold nobody's career up because I'm not, I'm not working with him no more. And I like the kid, you know what I'm saying? I want him to do really well, you know what I'm saying? So Vital had called me, and I was like, yo, y'all could do what y'all going to do because I'm not doing nothing, and Cal is a workaholic, so that's a good place for you to go. In a situation like that, do you get your money back that you invested? 
Yeah, we worked it out. <laughs> we worked it Cam out. Cam is Definitely. about his money. Yeah. One thing I, I want to make Cam. sure. Yeah, no, and I, and I talked to a lot of people because I like to invest. And they was like, if you ever get to, to see Cam, talk to Cam. It was like, yeah. Cam owns all types of crazy stuff that you never think of. They say you own like Taco Bells, KFCs, yeah, you have car washes, restaurants. Yeah, How like, did you get that business mind? Was it through Dame or was it? Well, definitely Dame, man. Dame's a big influence on me. But at the same time, uh, I don't like I don't like really working for anybody. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, so and I and I I don't like waking up early. I don't like sitting in traffic. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> basically, Sorry. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just saying in general. You know that always been my mind state. Even with music, it's like I tell people all the time, like, yo, do you, people ask you, do you get tired? Of, do you get tired of signing mm -hmm. autographs? Are you tired of taking pictures? Are you tired? I'm like, yo, this is if this is my job. This is easy. You know what I'm saying? I would hate to go work for somebody that I know I'm smarter than. That doesn't make any sense to right. me. So sometimes you don't, all investments aren't good, you know what I'm saying? Like, I try to open up a Golden Corral. That didn't work. Mm -hmm. You know, you got different things that work and some things that, that, things, I lost hundreds of thousands and I made millions on certain things, but you got to take a chance if you, if you, if you believe in what you're doing. Why, why do you keep stuff like that quiet? Because you know, there's a lot of people that don't see you and they be like, they quick to be like, oh, he's washed. You know? Yeah, like, yo, Kim. Because basically what I learned a lot is that when you own certain things, people will hate on it. So I yeah, don't put yeah, my true. name mm -hmm. on it. Like basically, it's certain people, um, no, I won't get into names or whatever, but let's say they got a blog or website and I'll be like, that's his, I'm not doing it. It's just cause I'm like, right. yeah. you know, not cause I hate them or I got a problem with them, but I'll be like, I'm not helping their stuff. I want my stuff to pop. Right. So a lot of stuff, I don't put my name on top of it anymore. Even like when it comes to writing or directing movies or whatever. I may take the executive producer credit or whatever, but even if I write a movie, like like percentage, basically, I wrote that, you know what I'm saying? But now, so I'll tell you what, I didn't put my name as the credit. That's the movie you know that Queen Latifah and Shaq Yeah, Kim. yeah, we, um, Queen Latifah and Shaq Kim, big shout out to them, they did a 10 movie deal over at Netflix, and uh, they gave me three of the movies, the other seven movies <coughs> that they're doing, I'm also executive producing, but they gave me three of my own to write. And we did a 10 movie deal with them, so nice. that's what I've been working on the last year and a half. What was your you, worst you, investment? Was it that Pink Range? Pink Range was actually a great investment. Yeah, that was actually. <laughs> that was like they still making investment. clothing. From Yo, fam, it was a, it's a club. Like, I just remember it on eBay for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> you know what? I was still using it as a promotional tool. Like, that was one of the best promotional tools you could use. When I had on a personal note, it's like you can't go anywhere. You try to go to the movies, you come out, it's surrounded, it's people looking <laughs> right. at it, but like, she was saying, there's so much stuff that's out now, and it's like, like yesterday, a new clothing line comes out, like it's like Polo or whatever, but like it's the pink, pink got range on the pocket. On the stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like you got all these shirts with camera on, with the pink on, with the cell phone and stuff like that, mm -hmm. so, you know, at those the socks of, that they did too, I like the yeah, uh, camera I, the, socks. Yeah, the socks, we be doing those too for 200 a pop. Jeez. How did you get away with wearing pink back in the day? Because nowadays, if somebody would do that first thing, they'd be like, yo, he's gay. Yo, Cameron and, made people wear yeah, pink. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Everything pink. Yeah, pink yeah. minks, pink yeah. everything. Yeah, but um, to be honest, like all this stuff even now that's coming out, I didn't really plan to do it. I just always try to be different. It's like, you know, basically, like, I got all my jewelry in the box in the house, all that, but I refuse to wear more than one chain because everybody now is wearing three or four or five chains. I just try to do whatever's different. And the pink thing happened, basically, Dame was going to Fashion Week a lot at that time, and I'm like, I need to stand out, it's Fashion Week. <laughs> and I wore the pink mink there and had everything <laughs> pink, and it just like newspapers and everything, and it just started going crazy. I'm like, I'm gonna run with this because people are like going with it. You know, even people's calling me like, what's next year's color? I'm like, I don't know, <laughs> <I'm> Crayola. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So when, did you, when did you decide to stop doing it? When everybody does it. Gotcha. When everybody does it, I can't do what everybody else does. So basically that's when I stopped when, you know, Fat Farm, I remember Russell Simmons, Pink is our color this year, and different clothing <laughs> companies, stuff like that. So when everybody starts doing something, I kind of shy away from it. You never did your own clothing line, though. Nah, right now, to be honest, uh, I got like five deals on the table mm -hmm. that people are trying to do capsule collections with me. And uh, my, I could never understand the clothing business, even when I was around Dame and Russell and everybody else, because... You know, these guys like Rockaware or Fat Farm at that time when I was around it, they would get like six or seven percent. And I'm like, yo, this is y'all brand. How are we only taking six or seven percent? And I just didn't understand it. You know what I'm saying? So I never agreed to do a clothing deal at that time. Not realizing that's kind of standard what people get mm -hmm. for a clothing deal. But I just was like, if it's my brand and my label, 
I don't understand it because, like, you may say, um, for instance, like Rockaware back then made maybe 150 million, 200 million, but then it's Rockaware and Damon was getting six or seven percent. I just was like, man, forget it. I'd rather not take anything than to get shorted on my own brand. Well, maybe you can help us understand what the hell Kanye's bitching about. <laughs> I, that's what I said. Why wouldn't he just start his own situation? What, Create your own leather jogging pants line. What, what's he beefing about? I don't know. That the fashion industry won't let him in. Like, he wants to do high designer fashion. Oh. Uh, well, it's like that, man. You know, once these people, um, you know, once these people, uh, they have an establishment, you know, it's like a, it's a secret society in certain things. You know what I'm saying? Like, a friend of mine, I won't say the name because I don't want to put them on blast. Uh, they're going through something at the networks right now because they have a show and their ratings are so great. But uh, the networks, you know, whether it be it's a major network, you know, ABC, NBC, <clears throat> CBS, they're upset that the view, the the ratings are so good, but nine out of ten um, people that are watching it are black. You know, we need we need at least three white, one Spanish. This and they like look, the ratings are the ratings. You mm. know what I'm saying? And and you're like, well, this is the way it works. And if you don't like it this way, then we can't do it this way. And Justin Justin Timberlake can't come on your show because it's too black but he could go on the Ellen show. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. basically, I, I know it's, it's like real vague because I don't want to put them on blast, but just in general, I was, back to the original point, even in the talk show world or the clover world, whatever, these people are established. They don't want everybody coming in and being like... Uh, Shaking it up. Yeah, like when we when we do liquor and do, do go to these liquor conventions when we had Scissor and everything else, you should see the look on white people's face. Like, what are these... Uh, Negroes doing it here, basically. Like, yo, you know, people on Hennessy or ENJ or even Major Champagne. You know, these people been doing this for years, and this generations passed down. So when you got some uh, twenty year old, mid twenties, or early thirty year old black guys walking in with liquor, they like, yo, what are they doing here? They and they'll shut you down. The game. Yeah, exactly. What the hell happened with Scissor? We sold it. Okay, we sold it. Did you get a lot of flack from guys down south who were like, yo, that's all? That's all? How you gonna take? Nah, we, name and run with it. we called Three Six Mafia to cut all that out. They was in the video. They did the video with us. They did the Scissor commercial, and they had the Scissor song first, so that eliminated all that. Right. I always feel like Dipset was always really big in the South too. Like yeah. one of the Midwest first too. Time. Yeah, mm-hmm. Midwest yeah. too. Well, now, we what, lived what? a lot of places also. You know what I'm saying? I lived in Ohio for four years. I lived in Chicago for three years. Not saying I wasn't coming back and forth, but we um, planted our flag a lot of different places. Now, also when uh, you got into the, the fight outside the club in New York City, mm-hmm. it feel like at that that point you kind of just went on the ground for a little bit like it like it made you feel like New York or people turned on you yeah. that's when I felt like the camera on changed a little bit like yeah. you were just no more public you was just to yourself yeah now nah, basically it wasn't even that my mom had had a stroke like maybe the two three days after that three strokes in one day mm-hmm. and then basically that's when Jim got on the radio and was saying everything he said so basically I had to step back and see who around me is who and then I take care of my mother. Like, you know, she basically is in the hospital for a month and a half with a speech impediment, left side of her body paralyzed. Mm-hmm. And it was just all that at one time. But my family comes before everything. Mm-hmm. Is, is it hard to trust guys after they flipped on you once and then they, they come back in the circle? Nah, 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 man. You know, we from Harlem. That been going on way before us, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like you got to realize, like, you know, I, I, like, I tell people a lot, like, I love Dame and Biggs' relationship. You know, Biggs, shout out to Biggs. He's locked up right now. But, you know, it's rare for a lot of people to stick together because in Harlem, it's mad chiefs. It's not a lot of Indians. Everybody's kind of want to be a boss. So you just got to prepare yourself for stuff like that. But they were saying Jim Jones was upset with Meek because uh, he got the title of one of his songs Rich called Porter. Rich Porter. Oh. Does it bother you when people outside of Harlem, you know, do stuff like that? I ain't got nothing to do with that. I don't know what's going on with that neither. But, nah, to me, basically, uh, I don't mind. Like, Meek Mills has a song named Rich Porter and Jim's mad about it. That's what they, they're saying. They're taking shots. Yeah, they say uh, Jim threw a shot at him. Oh, uh, On Twitter. You know how it goes. Yeah. You never mentioned Meek's name, but you're okay. not a, a Yeah, uh, I don't know. But me, personally, like, if you, it's basically showing love to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, none of us knew Rich Porter. He's older than us, you know what I'm saying? I've never even met Rich Porter. I don't know Alpo, I don't know none of them, but you know the story is legendary. But at the end of the day, I don't got a problem with that. 
It's cool. Now, whatever happened with you and 50? Because I remember there was a time when y'all two were not getting along with each other. I didn't even know where that This is like, though, so the beef, this is like beef on top, beef on top, beef on top. We don't never see you. No, I'm with it. We got to ask you everything. We never know when we're going to see you again. I ain't got no problem with answering none of these questions. Because you got to put out that video in the backyard in Miami. Yeah. Look at my pool. Yeah. No, those cameras had some big moments, and that was one of the moments that... No, nah, I smoked a 50 maybe about like seven, eight months ago. We was talking about doing some business, and mm-hmm. that was just a moment, you know? Like, like basically, that's what I was saying earlier about the J thing. With me, it be moments. Like, if you ain't never do nothing to my family or hurt nobody in my loved ones, and it's music, it's, to me, it's a moment. If you want to keep on going with it, then we keep on going because I'm not going to stop. But, you know, if we calm down and talk and speak, I'm cool with it. So me and him spoke a few months ago. And uh, we was talking about doing some business together, and uh, mm-hmm. that was that. But I don't got a problem with 50 neither. Real people, real celebrities, real talk. Join the Breakfast Club. Weekday morning, 6 to 10. Power 1051. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, this is one of the interviews that the Breakfast Club gets excited about. Absolutely. Haven't seen this guy up here as of yet. Absolutely. <laughs> we tried a couple times. Bright and early. His eyes look a little red. Yeah, Definitely absolutely. a little red. <laughs> that's, the, that's the perp, though. No, 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 no. It's too early for that. <laughs> Ladies and that, gentlemen, man. Cameron. Killer yes. Cam. Thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. Big fan of the show, man. Thanks for coming. They didn't believe you were really thing. coming, Cameron. Definitely right? not. Charlamagne said he ran into you and you mentioned <laughs> I saw, it. I seen him yesterday. He kind of put the extra pressure like, you'll be there tomorrow, right? So. <laughs> I seen Cam twice in my life. First time yeah. I ever seen Cam, he was shooting hoops in, in, in a gym. And my, I'm so stupid. I was like, yo, Rico got out? <laughs> <laughs> I get that all the time. Like, yo, what's up, Rico? You know what I'm saying? Like, called me later that night and, and kicked him out. Like, he was waiting for a whole nother event, and then, like, eight bouncers came and surrounded him. Yeah, I was there. Them, like, yeah, exactly. Like, what kind of hate is that? I, and, and I said to him, I said, why they let you in here? Word, and then wall, next man, I'm disappointed in you too, man. We better than that, man. Have, have man. you and Jay back. ever been cool? Mm-hmm. Like, where does this stem from? <laughs> That's what I said. Let's go back to um, Rockefeller days, because uh-huh. you, you guys were signed to Rockefeller. Yeah. Dame, Dame and, and Jay signed you. You, you know, you yeah. had a rock chain. And, and yeah. where did it start going south? Um, bad. Uh, basically, you know, when I got over there, I really just, you know, because they was already established, Dave did a favor for me. Uh, you know, I was in a bad deal at Sony, mm-hmm. and um, he did me a favor bringing me over there because I was my man since 10, 10, 11 years old. So when I got there, I went over there very polite because they already had their situation, you know, pretty much established. So, you know, I see Jay at the studio, and I'll be like, you know, let's do a song, let's do this, and he'll just look at me like, just like that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like, all right, you know what I mean? So um, then we just started heating up, you know what I'm saying? And he he just like put himself on a couple records, but I wasn't feeling what he did, so I took him off the song. Oh boy, they say he took him off, oh boy. Yeah, I, I wasn't feeling the verse, so. And I'm not dissing him, and I, 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 like, I like Jay's music, he's dope or whatever, but I just wasn't feeling the verse, you know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna lie about it. And then where it really went south, like he went somewhere or something, and Dame like offered me the job to be like vice president. The vice president, I remember. That. He went, he went yeah. on on vacation, and yeah. Dame made you vice president of Rockefeller. But he didn't he, even he, consult he, with Jay Z about he it. He made me an offer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get that a lot. So, but I, I'm a big fan of the show, man. Thanks for having me. It, it isn't that I didn't want to come here. I'm just not a real early person. Absolutely. But um, thanks for having. Oh, you could have stayed up all night and came, and it'd have been like late night. I was thinking that. See, I live <laughs> in Jersey. Traffic coming over here was crazy. It's just a bit, just a hole to do. I was gonna stay in the city. City last night, but uh, I just did. All right. Now you got yeah. the new mixtape out, Ghetto Heaven. Yeah, it's out right now. Uh, my man Remo put everything together on live mixtapes. You know what I'm saying? So uh, that's out right now. Make sure y'all go check it out. We were well, talking about it because we were like, Cam actually got some hot songs on here. Well, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, no. I was, was, was worried. I was kind of like, <laughs> worried. Actually, I don't believe it. People, people, people was worried for a minute though. It was a couple records you dropped, and everybody was like, ah, I don't know what Cam doing. Nah, you know it is what it is. I can't please everybody all the time, but um, I appreciate the love and the reception that I'm getting on this tape, so I appreciate that. Go outside is a tough tune. Thank you, man. I appreciate that, man. Definitely. Everybody talking about the Come and Talk to Me record mm-hmm. when you responded back to Jay saying mm-hmm. he made you a millionaire. Yeah. It seems like you two always, always are going to have some type of issue. I don't know. I mean, my thing is, you know, my once I'm like, if I'm off the radar, just leave me alone. Like, once you say my name, my like antennas go up a little bit. But uh, I don't really consider it a diss. He had made a comment, and I made a comment back on the record, so it wasn't like a back and forth thing. I just answered kind of what he said. But I think he had something against us a little bit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, 
you can't play our music in the 4040 clubs. Like, you're not allowed in there, even. No, I don't want to go in there. I don't care about even being to this day. Yeah, yeah, to this day, you can't. I'm play. not, yo, yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, one time, what, music what, music what kind of hate is that? Like, I was in there and Freaky Ziki was in there. And he got eight bouncers came.